Hello everyone and welcome to another video in this channel. Today we're going to be taking a look at a very very cool thing. Let's imagine that we have this character. We're presenting the idea to the director, to our client, and we've been working on the textures for a long time, right? And they say, you know what? How would this character look if it was yellow or pink or red? It's a very complicated thing to go back to substance, change all of the layers, adjust the colors, and start doing things. Like, what if we wanted the skin to be a little bit wetter, a little bit, like, uh, drier? Like, how can we make those changes without having to go all the way back to textures? Well, here's where the power of Hypershade comes into play. So, let's go. I'm going to open the Hypershade, and this character has a, I would say, relatively complex shading network, as you can see right here. It's not that difficult, but uh, it can scare some people. Where is it? There we go. Uh, it's, it's nothing like super fancy. We got an emissive map, we got the metalness, we got a multiply divide for the base color, we got the roughness, and we got the normal map. The only thing that's interesting here is that we're using UDIMs. And um, I don't think we've done... Have we done a UDIM video? Let me know in the comments if, we, if you want me to do a UDIM video about uh, Maya. I think we've done it before, but I'm not sure. So what we're going to do here is we're going to start like intercepting some of this information that's going into the material before it gets to the material so that we can do some adjustments. I'm going to make this thing a little bit smaller. Actually, one way I like to work here is I like to bring my render view into the hypershade. There we go. So that we can see the render up here and we can see the hypershade over here. That's a little bit too much. Like this one right here, we don't need it right now. I just need my, oh, where is it? I just need my notes. There we go. So I'm going to delete this one. Delete this one. There we go. Let's go over here to the side. Perfect. That's a little bit better. We don't need this one either. Cool. So if we go to the nodes and we go to where the color information is, which is right here before the multiply divide, one of the things that we can do, or we can do it after the multiply divide, is we can insert a very simple node, which is an HSV node. So I'm going to press tab and I'm going to look for hue, saturation, and value. Just remap hue, saturation, and value. And as you can see, this, ex ex this is expecting a color. So we're going to plug in this multiply and it's going to output the color right here. If we render, nothing's going to happen, like exactly the same thing. But this, like just one single node is going to give us a lot of like uh, capabilities here on the render to start seeing things in a different way. For instance, if I push the selected position here of my hue a little bit down, you can see that we're going to be able to get slightly different hues for the character. This is the only bad thing that I don't like about this is that this is acting as a colorizer. So it's affecting the whole character pretty much linearly. OK, so every single part of the character is going to be affected. We can like move a couple of things around here. But the cool thing is, as you can see, we get some interesting like changes on the overall like image of our character. So if you are working with a client that needs a lot of options to decide what's the best for his project, this is a good way to do it. Let me bring this back. The other thing that we can move here, the other like little element that we can change is the saturation. So if we want to desaturate this thing, we can push it down or we could even push it up like 1.5. Okay, and that's going to give us a lot of vibrant colors here on our character. So there's a lot of things that we can do here with the elements. And another thing that I really like is doing this value right here, which allows us to change how the like general color of our character looks. So let's say we wanted a yellow character, right? So go to the saturation. We bring the saturation down until we find the yellows. There we go. And then in this case, it's looking very like pale, very ugly. So let's increase the intensity of the yellow a little bit more. And uh, we can play, for instance, with the dark colors and bring them up a little bit so that we get a nicer effect. Let's bring this down a little bit there so it's not as intense. And there we go. So now we have a different, completely different result without having to go all the way back to substance and generate a different effect. I'm going to stop the render here. I'm going to save this one, actually, because I'm going to be using it for the thumbnail. So let me save this on the desktop for now. Let's call this yellow. And now let's add another node. Like I'm just going to, again, this is a brief video. So I just want to show you how to modify other nodes to get some interesting effects as well. So let's say we go back. Let, let's go to like a red color instead. So render. There we go. Something like that. Let's bring the saturation down. Let's bring the value down. You can play with the curves as well, as you can see right here. 
we're going to be getting some interesting effects. There we go. That looks pretty cool. So let's say we got this result and uh, it looks nice. It's a, it's an interesting effect. But the director says, hey, you know what? I want to see how he looks if he's really, really wet. Like he just went down into the water. He just came out and he's like completely covered in water. Well, we know that that like elements coming here from the roughness. And for the roughness, one of the notes that we can use to intercept that one is called a ramp note. We can use a ramp note, a very simple ramp right here. And uh, what we want to use is we want to map out the information, in this case, the out color alpha information to this, um, to the color of the ramp node. So actually, we're going to do something a little bit different here. So let's do AI ramp RGB. There we go. So we're going to input the output color or out out output of the alpha channel of the roughness here. And the output of the red channel is usually the one that we want is going to go into the roughness. If we do that, nothing should change right now. But this ramp right here will allow us to push the values. We know that in the roughness map, the, the wider we go, the less like shiny is going to be. In the darker we go, the more shiny it will be. So if we push the blacks to this side right here, you can see everything becomes very, very, very wet. And if we go to even this white right here and we change them to black, everything's just going to be like completely, completely wet covered in oil or something. Now, the cool thing about this is that what's happening here is we're mapping the whole range of our roughness into this map right here. So if we go, for instance, to the middle section, we can add another point, and maybe we want the middle values of our current roughness to be a little bit higher. So we go to this color right here, and we make this color a little bit like darker in this case, so that everything becomes, again, a little bit rougher without affecting the high points. We could even go to the high points and be like, hey, I want these high points to be like a little bit more or less intense. We're gonna push this like this. And as you can see, we're gonna get some points that are gonna be really, really dry and some points that are gonna be really, really wet depending on the type of roughness that we're doing. So this is just a very basic overview of how we can intercept the data that's flowing from our maps into our material and change this pretty much in real time or at render time. We do this a lot in games. We do this a lot in engines where certain things might not match perfectly. You just add a couple of notes, tweak them around so that you don't have to go all the way back to substance and fix things uh, on your character. So yeah, this is it, my friends. Our premium course, I believe at the time you're watching this, our premium course should already have released. So if it has, please check the description right here if you want to learn how to do this and many more things inside of the 3D world. Also, don't forget that we have our Discord channel available where you can find us, ask questions, share your 3D work, and just keep growing as an artist. Thank you very much, my friends. This is it for this brief video, and I'll see you back on the next one. Bye-bye.